was, I was listening to the readings and, and just thinking of the different parts of it. And uh, last night we have that beautiful concert. And um, I, I went out afterwards. I mean, it was, it was kind of late. We went up to Sauce and got, got some dinner, some drinks, and then went home and stayed up late. And uh, so I'm, I'm kind of tired because I didn't sleep. And I was thinking about sleep and these readings, and, and um, I, here's a phrase that I heard maybe a year or two ago I want to share with you. You know how sometimes, uh, you know, you get to be over 60, and, you know, you, there's such a thing as okay sleep, and there's such a thing as deep sleep. And you know the difference, and I love deep sleep. It's like my favorite thing. Yeah, and I just don't ever get it. Maybe you guys, why it's my favorite thing. Uh, but I want to introduce a new phrase to you that's even better than deep sleep. And it's deeply awake. Have you ever thought of that? Just being deeply awake. Because we go through this life, and we heard about it last week with all the distractions that are going on in this life, and Advent calls us away from those distractions, out into the desert, if you will, uh, to get away from distractions and wake up, to be able to watch for the coming of the Lord because we're fully awake. So I want you to just remember from this homily uh, just two words, deeply awake. And I want you to live that in your spiritual life and in your whole life. Just go through life not asleep, uh, not, not uh, just going through the motions, not f thinking, wow, that year went by so fast, but just awake all the time to what God's doing in the world. That's what the saints did. The people like Francis of Assisi or Teresa of Avila or John of the Cross or Augustine and all these wonderful saints, they just came to a place where they woke up and they were deeply awake. And when you do that, there's another thing that happens. You're not just awake, but you encounter everything the way God encounters it. And you encounter God, who is love itself, who is the creator of all things. And so being deeply awake and encountering this God who is love and being fully awake to that you begin to live like St. Francis of Assisi did, uh, just going around fully uh, in love with God's people and all of creation and just taking care of the poor. Everyone to him was a brother and he loved him so much. It wasn't, he didn't love all of creation. You know, we have this image of him with all these animals over here. He didn't love those things because he was a hippie. He looks like one, but it wasn't a crazy creation, tree-hugging love. Uh, it was a God-encountering love that just let him be awake all of a sudden. He's now awake to all of creation, all of life, all the people of the world. And that's what I think Advent calls us to in this season that's the darkest time of the year, uh, even though it's the most wonderful time of the year, it calls us to light. It calls us to be deeply awake. Can you imagine that? Just being deeply awake. I, I knew a woman, I just loved her uh, at a school I was at, and uh, she struggled with alcohol, and she gave it up. And she gave it up, and she, she said, I was such a blessing. I got to raise my kids sober. I got to raise my kids awake. I was awake to life all around me because I had given all that up. And so Advent is a time of coming out of our slumber. Awake, O sleeper, and Christ will give you the light of life. So the one point I want to make today, just listening uh, to the gospel and the readings, is that the other is just John the Baptist. This character that we introduced last week, uh, today 
He's a whole different character. Uh, he's typically bold. He's typically strong. He's typically prophetic. He's out there just tearing it up, just rough, almost abrasive. And today, he's like defeated. He's in jail. He's depressed. And he sends his disciples and says, go ask Jesus, is he the one or not? Or do we want to look for another? He's let all the distractions of this world, which is easy to do when you're in a prison in first century uh, Palestine, when you're, when you're in a prison that long and you're just trying to do God's work, it's easy to get down. It's easy to let all the circumstances of our life get us down. And I think Advent is all about that, is even in those situations where you're like John the Baptist, just in a prison, feeling down, and then we come to this Sunday where we wear pink and we say, rejoice, rejoice in prison. Paul the Apostle was be in prison all the time. He'd be beaten all the time. And, and even in prison, he was singing hymns and rejoicing. How can he do that? That word rejoice today is in the imperative. It's, it's not just saying uh, rejoice, you know, is a good idea. It's saying it's a command. Rejoice. Now, we wake up some days uh, in a good mood. Isn't that right? And we wake up some days in a bad mood. Isn't that right? We can wake up depressed. And I remember one day I woke up just profoundly depressed. And I'm like, ah, Jesus looks like we're going to be depressed today, uh, together. And uh, it's in there somewhere that we get the joy. Because God isn't commanding us to have feelings of rejoicing. God's commanding us to something so much more profound uh, that no matter where you are in the desert uh, that's going to start to bloom, we can, whether we're up or whether we're down through all the distractions of life, we can find a place in us where we can rejoice. I told you the story before. I was trying to teach my kids how to just do contemplative prayer, and they're just little kids. So I was going to spend five minutes in silence. Wouldn't that be beautiful with all those kids in the house? Five minutes of silence. So I took them into my office, and in my office at home, there's a, a, a register, a heater, that has a fan under it to pull uh, the stuff from the furnace all the way over to that room. So it's really, really noisy. It sounds like uh, the furnace on the movie Home Alone, that's, you know, that monster furnace. And it makes this horrible noise. And it's right under my office. And so I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to just be silent for five minutes and just open our minds and hearts and just focus on, on like, God or love or, or just one thing. And so we start the silence and as soon as we start the silence, the neighbor drives up right in front of my house in a monster truck, which is where the, my office is, right there. And it's like, blah, 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 through most of the silence. And finally, he turns the thing off, and uh, he's walking up to his house, and he's got one of those key fobs. They were new back then. And so he's like, Beep, 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 beep. And he does it like three, four times to make sure it's locked. I'm like, all right, God, thanks a lot. You're doing this, I know. And so that finally that stops. And there's a couple minutes left. And the furnace comes on. Uh, and it stopped right when the five minutes was up. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> Sorry about that. But let's just um, start. Maybe, Cindy, you go first. Tell me what happened during your five minutes of silence. And she said something beautiful, something profound. I have no idea what it was because of what the kids said. That really got me. Uh, after Cindy, I'm like, uh, 
okay, Stephen, tell me, what was it like for you? And he says, it was amazing. He said, I realized I could be in perfect silence with noise going on all around me. And that's what Advent is, being able to be in perfect joy with all the distractions going on around us, with all the ups, with all the downs, with all that's going on in this life, we can still experience that perfect silence, that perfect peace. And I'm like, okay, Christian. Christian was probably like eight years old. And uh, I'm like, did you get anything at all out of this? He goes, Dad, it was like being in another dimension. (laughs) It was just me and God. And I'm like, are you guys kidding me? I'm a priest and I got nothing out of it. I'm all mad at the neighbors and the furnace and God and everything else. And my little kids got exactly what God wants us to get out of Advent. In all this noise, you can be in perfect silence. You can be just you and God as you go through this world in certain times. So I'm going to close with that image of the Wheel of Fortune. I talked about this before in other homilies, and uh, 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 Bishop Barron likes to talk about it over in the Gothic cathedrals. There's the painting called The Wheel of Fortune, where at the top of the wheel is a king, and then coming down this side, the king's falling over and his crown's falling off. And on this side, not even close to being a king, it's just a pauper, just some really poor guy with nothing, no power, no money, nothing. And then coming up this, uh, the guy's climbing the ladder to power, to, to, to good things, to riches. And then, of course, the king's at the top. So that's the wheel of fortune. And it kind of describes our life, doesn't it? You know, there's times where we're on top of the world, everything's going really well, and there's times where we're just falling off, you know? And there's times where we're at the bottom of it. It's like one year my company's doing really well, and the next year I'm completely broke. And then there's those times where we're trying to grow, we're trying to climb uh, to the top. And so people in this world get on that wheel of fortune and they get stuck on that wheel and they can't get off. Advent's a time to get off the wheel because in the middle of the wheel and that painting is Jesus in that window. Jesus is right in the middle and he's calling us to just get off that wheel and just meet Jesus and have true joy. That's why we can command joy, because we can get off that wheel and get joy. Uh, I was a a kid when the Beatles were popular. Uh, Some of you look my age, and you might remember the Beatles. And uh, remember that song, I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. I just love to watch him roll. I'm no longer on the merry-go-round. A beautiful voice, isn't it? Dan can do that. I'm no longer on that merry-go-round. I just love to watch him roll. I'm off of it. I'm now living life. Yeah, well, they were all hippies. Uh, But we're not called to that. We're called to be deeply awake. We're called to get off the merry-go-round. We're called to get off that wheel of fortune we call life. All the ups and downs that we can't control, all the feelings we can't control, they're fine. Don't worry about those. But we're called off into the middle to just spend time with Jesus and to fulfill that command of joy. Meeting Jesus, we now have joy. We have peace. We have life. We have light. Awake, O sleeper, and I will give you the light of life, full of joy. That's our faith. That's our third Sunday of Advent faith. It's so true and so good. We wear pink just to get your attention and say, get, wake up, get off the wheel, and enjoy the light of life. What a wonderful week. What a wonderful call. What a wonderful spirituality. What a wonderful faith we have.